Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. We often get asked, particularly by beginners and people that are new to patchwork and quilting, what they can do with a jelly roll. These always look so enticing on the shelves. So what I do is I generally refer them to the jelly roll race, which was what I saw about 10 years ago. And it's one of the easiest quilts you can make. There isn't any cutting using a rotary cutter and there isn't any matching and it goes together really quickly. In the quilt behind me, I've actually cut the jelly roll strips in half because I wanted more of a spread of the color. But when I first saw this, it was done with full length strips from the jelly roll. So it's entirely up to you which way you want to do it. But I'm going to show you how to do it cutting your strips in half. And for today, I have chosen a batik jelly roll just because of the lovely bright colours. The quilt behind me is a William Morris Christmas range. So that just gives you an idea of the difference in colours of, of what can be achieved by using different jelly rolls. So I've got one under here that I've already opened and I have started to sew it and I'm going to show you what I mean. So I've already cut all my strips in half from this batik jelly roll. And as you can see, I've joined them at an angle. And I'm just going to show you how I've done that. So I'm gonna take the last piece I've sewn and then I'm gonna pick up another piece and I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to put that together. So this is the long strip that I've already sewn together. And as you can see here, I've done it at an angle. So how do you achieve that? So with right sides together, and that's the beauty of a batik, it doesn't really matter which, because it looks the same on both sides. But if you were using a regular jelly roll, you would put right sides together this has got no selvages, so I haven't got to worry about that. And then what I do is, as you can see, I lay one on top of the other at an angle like this. And then I just fold that corner down and do a bit of a finger press because what that then does is that gives me a line to sew on. And so I sew across that line Now, if you wanted to, you could chain piece at this point. So you would pick up your next strip. So my needle is in, I'm going to do exactly the same. And this just speeds up the process. But if you're not confident, then do each piece individually. And you do that with your whole jelly roll. And then what you do is, I'm just gonna cut that there where I've chain pieced it. Then what you do is you cut off this little piece here that's standing out and that gives you your quarter inch seam. And you do that with all your pieces I've just got one more. I think I've done it with most of them already. But what I would also say is before you cut it off, when you open it out, make sure that you've got your angle going the right way. In the past, I've had it the wrong way round. So always do that before you cut it because you can unpick it. But once you've cut it, there isn't a lot you can do. and keep these tiny little scraps because I'm sure there's a project later on that we're going to use tiny scraps on. So watch this space. So when you've got all of your jelly roll joined together, your whole row in a big long strip, what we're going to do is we're then going to take it end to end. So your one will obviously be longer than this. I'm just doing a smaller piece for the purposes of today's video. So before you start sewing, 
you need to cut a length off your first strip just so that shuffles the colour slightly. So if I was doing a full length strip, I'd cut off about 14 inches from it. But as I'm only doing a half length, I cut off six inches from it. And what that does is that moves all your angled shapes about randomly in your quilt. So we're joining two pieces right sides together and we're going to use a quarter inch seam. When you get to where your seam is, just fold it back and go over it. And the seams are quite small, so it's not going to matter which way they go. When we've sewn all the way to the end, what you do is you cut into your strips. So you can see that your big long strip has now become two joined together. And then what you do is you repeat this process. Let's come back up to the top. You repeat this process and you join two pieces together and you join these again. So then you've got four strips and then you pick up your bottom piece and you sew it together. Your four strips become eight and so on until you've got the size quilt that you want. I also just want to show you that if you've got selvage edges, I just wanted to show you how to do it with that. So you would lay your fabric. So here we can see we've got a selvage edge and we've got a selvage there. And what I've done is I've just laid them so the selvage edges hang over. So you haven't got to keep cutting these off before you start. Then you would do your sewing across at a diagonal. And now, because you're going to cut this, let's do it under this camera, you're going to cut this a scant quarter and you can see that it's got rid of your selvage edges. So it just saves time and you've still got that angle. So I've shown you using a batik jelly roll and I've shown you using regular strips so that you haven't got to worry about your selvage edges. So we're now going to go over to the quilt and we're going to talk about how it's been quilted and the border and the binding. So this quilt was made using the technique I've just shown you and the range was called Morris Christmas. And when I bought it, I wasn't sure about the blue because I felt that Christmas didn't have this much blue in it. And I was going to take the blue out but I'm glad now that I didn't because I think with the blue, it gives it a completely different look because you need the light and the dark for this to work. And so here you can see how the angles have moved slightly. So if you remember, I said I cut six inches off the first strip before I joined them. And that's why we do that. Otherwise, all your angles would be in the same position. So it's really important that you remember to do that. So I just kept joining them together, picking up each end and sewing them together. And then I have quilted it really simply. I've gone every fourth row and I've just done a decorative quilting pattern here and here. And I used a grey thread because it's very difficult when you've got lots of colours like this. So I didn't want the quilting to detract from the beauty of the fabric. I've put a little fillet in the black and gold. I've put a border 
which I cut at three and a half inches. So it's a three inch finish border. And then I've put the binding the same as the fillet. And the back was also fabric that was part of the same range. So this is actually one of my favorite Christmas quilts and it's really quick and easy to do. It's just about having the confidence if you're a beginner that it will work out because there's no matching and it goes together really quickly. So as always, have fun, have a go at this and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a button just to my left. If you've got any questions, we're happy to answer those in the comments below. And for all your patchwork and quilting needs, head on over to the sewing studio. We have an amazing array of patchwork and quilting products and all of the relevant links are in the description below. Look forward to seeing you next time.